Oh, what a lady! Hi, I'm Dave, and this is my channel, the Dave Sterl YouTube channel, and with loads of videos on car repairs, testing, tool reviews, and in this video here, we'll have a wee look at these cheap fuses that you buy, and Liam's going to take that testing a wee bit further. Hello and welcome to another budget and leg it video. Yes, now we are breaking out this bad boy. I've done a quick little video on it and I'm going to be doing lots more videos on it because this thing is unbelievable. Now, um, it's like everything with the modern cars and electric vehicles and stuff like this. This is the sort of thing you are going to need uh, to work on these cars because this is a milliometer. And I'm going to explain, as you can see from the title of the video, don't cheap out on things. Don't try and save money. Just just don't, because honestly, it's going to bite you back really hard, especially if you've got a modern car and you can do thousands of pounds worth of damage all down to a simple fuse. So what we're going to do in this video, I'm going to show you just basically how accurate this machine is, but also we're going to show you what a bad fuse is, you know, and exactly why they're bad. We've got a 15 amp fuse here. This is a really cheap naggy one. Now, if this isn't properly built to spec, this could be acting as a 20 amp fuse, as a 30 amp fuse, as a 40 amp fuse. So in other words, it doesn't blow when it's supposed to. And depending on what circuit you are working on, normally, again, this is normally, if you've got a 15 amp fuse, normally it's about half, maybe 60% of that amperage going through this fuse in a normal circuit. And when it spikes up to the 15, it will blow. But, and your, your, your part it's detecting still should be okay because it's kind of manufactured to, to take that. But if you put a 15 amp fuse in its place and it pops at 30 amp, well, the thing that it's protecting is going to blow up. And that thing it's protecting could be thousands of pounds to replace. Could even be completely destroying your vehicle where it's not worth actually replacing. And with this bad boy, we can actually measure that accurately. Now, there is a few things you need to uh, be careful of. This, this is really really accurate so i have to make sure that everything is at the same uh, temperature so in other words when you're testing something and you really need to be precise especially on electric vehicles and especially on uh, windings and stuff like that you really have to be precise so you need to keep this machine and the vehicle in the same place for a few hours to so they both reach the same temperature and i'm going to show you why that makes a huge difference in a minute once i turn this bad boy on just the heat of my hand putting a fuse in the heat of my hand and squeezing it will change this dramatically so let's get into it let's show you why do not try and save money we're talking danger people here don't do it sorted this will measure down to 0 0.1 micro ohms yes 0 0.1 micro ohms people get your head around that and to give you an idea milli ohms is a thousandth of an ohm Micro ohms is millionth of an ohm. This will measure 0 0.1 micro ohms. That's a hundred nano ohms. Yes, people, it's mind boggling. Like I said, I will be doing a full video on this, you know, giving you a lot more features and where it's practical, uh, you know, in kind of our line of work and stuff. But for this video, we're just going to be showing you fuses and just the difference a fuse can make people just think these are just fuses and they take no notice they see a load online and they're really dirt cheap and they're just terrible so the first thing i'm going to do just for shits and giggles is i'm going to measure well I, I, i'll get them i'm going to measure just the thickness of the metal and you're going to see just even in the design just even in the making them that they're just different now, hopefully you can see that the top fuse is the uh, dodgy fuse and the bottom fuse is a proper fuse. And you can see the thickness of the metal. You can physically see it with your eyes. There's a there's a big difference. And of course, that's going to make a huge difference to the resistance to everything as well. And hopefully, hopefully the camera is showing that. Right, this is a good fuse, so it's a proper OEM fuse, and you can see it's 0 0.72 mil. Now, this is maybe not the most accurate way of doing it, but you're going to get a rough idea of just kind of the thickness of the metals just in making the thing. 
The cheap Nagi fuse then is 0 0.65. So there is a difference already just in the thickness of the metal. So just even in that test alone, there is no way that these fuses are identical. There just isn't. There, there's just no way they are identical. The metal is thicker in one of them. You can physically even see, I mean, these are just so cheap. They're just, they're, they're just terrible. They're just terrible. You get what you pay for. You know, certain things, yes, doing work yourself. That's how you save money. Don't try and save money on parts. Just don't because it will, I promise you. Sooner or later, it will kick you in the arse. I know I'm going to get people saying, well, I've used them fuses for years and it's never had a problem. Yeah, because you're using older cars that are not as sensitive. But honestly, once you start talking about the newer cars, and I'm talking 15, 16, 17 cars, uh, that's the year, by the way, you know, once they start getting older where everyone's going to be, you know, able to afford to buy them, this is when it's going to become a problem because yeah look i'm telling you you'll see from these tests don't do it just don't do it and you'll see this bad boy in action Ooh. like i said i will be doing a full video on all its specs because there's some things i like about it and there's some things i don't like about it but one thing you definitely 100 percent need to do if you buy one of these is get the temperature sensor because like I said, I'm going to show you in the video just the temperature of my hands, how it changes the resistance. And once you put the temperature sensor into this meter, it then knows the temperature of the room or whatever you happen to be in. And then it calculates it for you. If you don't have it, it's set to like a default setting and you have to do calculations, which just makes your life a lot harder. So I have some fuses here. You can see the ones with the, the white right in there, proper fuses, and the ones without, they're just dodgy just horrible dodgy fuses so we've got some mini and we got some slightly bigger ones here again now i've also got an led one and um, because i did a previous video saying oh, i've just found these fuses look how cool they are and i never really tested them properly in that sense so it's going to be interesting to see what these led ones uh test as so that's what we're going to do we're just going to do some uh quick resistance tests between these and we're going to see what they test at what they should be and blah 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 and sort it that's why you'll find in a lot of things, you know, like coil packs and stuff, they break down when they're hot because the resistance changes and everything changes. That's why this meter is unbelievable because it actually will measure the resistance of the air and then give you an accurate reading of everything, providing everything is at the same temperature. That's why I said you need to leave the meter and whatever you're testing in the same place for a few hours for it all to kind of get to the same temperature before you actually continue. I just know I'm going to get grief out there because of the price of this unit and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, if you want to fix a car, modern cars, you need the right equipment. And that just costs money because you know it's proper stuff. It's just as simple as that. It's like these fuses. I know people are going to say, well, I've been using the cheap fuses for years, never had a problem. I know people are going to say, because I've already had it, that they've used cheap supermarket oil. And I'm telling you, it's just like water. If you ever shake proper oil and then shake that stuff anyway so i know i'm going to get all that but i can only tell you it, you will regret it on the older cars cars you know up until now really well only the last five or six years are really are dependent on fuses let's be honest because you know the technology has completely changed so you know yes you might not have noticed any difference now but i guarantee you in the future you are going to know the difference Right, this is not going to be like proper scientific the way I'm going to do it because I don't, I can't remember the exact make of these fuses, so I, I don't have any data sheet. Now, they are more or less all the same. It also depends on the temperature because I'll show you that makes a huge difference. And um, another thing is people think fuses blow. They don't actually blow. They actually melt. And there's loads of parameters, vibration, heat, you know, and there's, there's just too many variables that I physically cannot uh, try and replicate unless I've got millions of pounds worth of equipment. So what I'm going to do just for this video is take all these ones with the right what, what, blah, blah, white writing as gospel so in other words as they are right and then we're just going to compare them to the bad ones it's not 100 percent accurate granted but it's going to give you an idea at least because like i said the temperature of the room 
makes a huge difference to the resistance well of anything so um and i'm not at the right temperature i'm not you know there's just too many variables that i can't i i, I can't do it properly but you're going to get the idea between a good fuse and a bad fuse that's the uh, that's the 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 idea of the video so uh yeah you're going to get the idea Right, so what I've done is I've just written good and bad and I'm going to refer to the ones with the, the the writing as good and the other ones as bad. And like I said, you know, this is not going to be accurate because it all depends on the temperature and I'm not at the right temperature to get a proper reading according to the manufacturers. So, we're just going to we're just going to do like I said. So, what I'm going to do is I'll just go into do the 10 amp first and I'm going to see if I can do this on camera, which I'm not going to be able to do. Maybe I can. And we get a reading. I have to wait about 10 seconds um, for it to actually stabilise. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put them on a bit better than that. But as you can see, putting them on a lot better has made a huge difference. Now I'm going to show you just how accurate this machine is. If I was to hold this in my hand and squeeze... Oh, let me just do that again. So if I was to hold this in my hand and just heat it up, you can see, just even in my fingers, just for them few seconds, look at the resistance changing. That's why this meter is awesome, because it's just so sensitive. But that's also why you need everything the same temperature so you can actually get a true reading. So I'm going to have to let this settle now for a few minutes before I actually test any of the fuses. But that'll just give you an idea of just how accurate this bad boy is. That's actually going down. I think this is uh, 7 milliohms. So um, I'm just going to let that settle for a few minutes and then I'll get back to the test. Right, I've just let that settle. That's the 10 amp, so that's 6.98. Now we've got the 15 and the 15 is 4.61. Now we've got the 20 amp and that's 3.54. And we've got the 30 amp, which is 1.95. Now, it does make a difference on the size of the fuse. Just let that settle. One point. It does say to leave about 10 seconds. So 1.99. That's the 30 amp fuse. That's our fuse's rating. And what we're going to do now is we're going to compare with the bad ones and see the difference. Right, so these are now our kind of aftermarket bad fuses. So we're going to test them and we're going to see if there's any difference, what the difference is and so on. Sorted. Right, so we have our 10 amp, our bad 10 amp. Which is 3.31. So next we're going to try is our 15 amp at 7.78. 7 point. 7 point seven eight 20 amp next and that is 1.90 so 1.9 trying to write through the camera is awkward sorted last one right now we've got our 30 amp and it's 3.39 sorry 2.39 2.39 2 now let's have a look at them results and see what basically it is it's actually gone up to 2.4 now 2.42 so we'll take that to 2.42 hmm there we go now what does that mean like i said we're just going to take these readings as good um just because of the way we're doing the test so our 10 amp, our good 10 amp, and our bad 10 amp, our bad 10 amp is practically acting, well, it's acting close to a 20 amp. So that's bad because that's basically double the amperage on that uh, fuse there, which isn't great. The 15 amp is... is close to is closer to a 10 amp. So the problem with that is that's going to keep popping on you and you're going to think you've got an issue somewhere in your circuit where it's just your fuse. The uh, 20 amp is essentially a 30 amp, 
And uh, yeah, so <laughs> I mean, yeah, and and the 30 amp is is the best. It's the closest one to the actual original specs. Um, the 30 amp, most probably you'd get away with that, but still, I mean, it's just crazy. You could see the temperature in here was changing. Um, what's the temperature in here now from when we started the video? So it's just 13 and a half degrees. So, uh, you know, like I said, I'm not within the parameters of doing the test properly, but you can see the difference and why it's bad. The 10 amp is essentially a 20 amp. The 20 amp is essentially a 30 amp. And, you know, there's just no consistency here. And that's the problem. It, it's just it, it's just bad. You know, this is the issue. When you put, um, you know, this into your circuit, we'll take the 20 amp as an example, but it'll, only, it'll pop at 30 amps. Well, whatever that's controlling, there's a good chance it's going to damage the unit or whatever it is first before the fuse actually blows. And that's the problem. That's why I'm saying do not buy cheap fuses, people. It's just not any good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to test this LED one against a known good 30 and test this LED one because I'd be interested. Now, to be fair to it, it does actually look, I'll, I'll get you close in a minute, but the, they do they do seem to be kind of the same thickness. But let's just kind of see what that is. Right, the good quality fuse is at the bottom and the LED one is at the top. And as you can see from the other one anyway, they're practically the same thickness. I can't see anything different with my eye like I could the other one. But let's see what the, the resistance tells us. Now, these are bigger fuses compared to the last one. So that's going to be different as well. Right, so that's a 30 amp known good. And that's 2.06. So that's the good one. And now let's see what the uh, bad one is. And this one is 1.93. Now, I think that's actually within spec. Um, so these LED ones, I'm not saying they are, but, you know, from the one I've just quickly tested, it may, well, it, they're better than the really cheap ones anyway. Um, so there we go. It's interesting. And this is the issue I was trying to explain before as regards, you know, and I say it in a lot of my videos, when you buy cheap stuff, you get what you pay for at the end of the day. You know, you know, when you buy 4 billion of these really cheap fuses for like, you know, um, a dollar or a pound, or whatever, you know, you realize you, you think you're getting a bargain, but you're not. And the actual colors, not that this makes a difference, but the colors are different as well. They're still both yellow, but they're different shades of yellow, different shades of green, different shades of blue. Now, that doesn't really make any difference, but I have noticed that on the cheaper kind of fuses too. But look, you know, yes, some things maybe is a great bargain, but don't skimp out on these. The, the money you're going to save... The few quid you're going to save, you're not going to save it in the long run. Believe me, people. Believe me. It's just not worth it. Don't do it. So that's it. A lot more videos coming up on this bad boy. Um, and a lot more kind of real world uh, videos are going to come up, uh, you know, in car testing and stuff. But like I said, for electric vehicles, stator windings and stuff like this, you need a machine like this. Unless you really want to strip everything apart and um you know try and figure out then or try and guess basically with this this can save you an absolute fortune as regards time yes it's not going to be for your diyers but at the end of the day cars are getting more complicated and if you don't have the right tools you can't fix it so it's looking like you know in the next 10 or so years that so-called diyers um even garages and that's not <laughs> if you don't have the right tools you're not gonna be able to fix the car and a lot of people are going to be um priced out just because they can't afford the equipment that's the way it's looking it's a shame but that's the way it's looking so that's it people that's the machine that's our quick dirty test you know these they're just not i mean they're just they're just terrible you know they're just just terrible that's it so look hope it helps please like share comment and subscribe don't forget links up here links down below but most importantly don't forget get your hands dirty see you for the next one sorted I know what people are going to say. Well, I would just swap that one for that one and swap this one for this one. But hey, how would you know? How would you know without having this machine exactly what uh, fuses 
you know exactly what amperage they they basically are and yes i know i'm going to get people saying well you should have put it in a in a load and all this sort of stuff yes i realize that but what i'm doing is this is just a quick easy test just to show you essentially there is a difference and as regards putting it in a load and and, and doing all that i don't really have the equipment to do a proper test i mean i'm not even at the right temperature to do a proper test in here so i don't have that sort of equipment but you don't really need it because I, this is just to show you look there is a difference and there's a huge huge difference so just be careful when you you know are buying fuses buying stuff you see cheap things on ebay and you think you're saving yourself money and i'm not just talking about fuses i'm talking about anything you know coil packs sensors anything don't necessarily buy it because it's just cheap because there's you know if things are too good to be true, it, they normally are. And it's the same with the fuses. Yes, if you want to take the risk, fair enough, do it. But seriously, you've also got to remember what most people don't take into account is that I'm working on customers' cars. I'm not working on my own car. I'm working on customers' cars that are paying me to do a service. If you're working on your own car and your own driver, you can more or less do anything you want because if you don't do it properly, you know you haven't done it properly and it's all on you. I can't do that for customers because I'll be, I'll be essentially, you know, um, playing poker with their lives. I can't do that. And I just can't because, again, it's just it comes down to that. But that's what most people don't understand when when they see YouTube videos. Oh, well, I would have done this and I would have done that. And I would. Yeah, you're doing that yourself on your own driver. You're not fixing customers cars that you could potentially kill them or kill someone else. You want to kill yourself. That's fair enough. But. Look, so that it, there's differences. This is shocking. This is bad. Take take away what you want from it, but I can only tell you don't buy these cheap fuses.